Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Baku Control Warrior. I played a ton of different Control Warrior builds this season. I climbed to Legend playing Control Warrior archetypes, and this one was the most successful build I played, and one that I enjoyed the most. I guess partially because it allowed me to play my favorite card in Hearthstone, King Mosh, once again. King Mosh is such a sweet board clear, and even though this build is missing the Blood Razor that I have usually used to activate King Mosh, running Double Whirlwind in a token meta is not bad by itself, and it can still activate King Mosh quite reliably. The overall game plan of Control Warrior is to remove all of the opponent's threats and win the game through frustration and fatigue. That said, it has a few active win conditions as well, so sometimes you're also able to apply some pressure and you don't have to go all the way to fatigue in all of your games. Looking at this build in particular, there are tons of board clears in this one. There's that double whirlwind and the king mosh. Then there's two copies of Reckless Flurry, and Reckless Flurry is really good in Baku versions of the deck, because you can armor up on a constant basis. You don't have to rely on something like Drivisk Armor giving you a ton of armor at once, and then you spend it and then you're all out of armor. Instead you can just keep armoring up, you can Reckless Flurry here, Reckless Flurry there, and just keep tanking up more afterwards. The deck also includes two copies of Brawl and a Baron Geddon, so basically all the AoE that you can imagine in an Odd Warrior is part of this build. Single target removal is slightly weaker, there's two copies of Shield Slam and there's a big game hunt, but you cannot run Executes in this build, so you're missing out on those. The deck compensates with Rush Minions, there's Town Crier to pull Rush Minions from the deck, there's two Rapid Vorgans and there's Darius Crowley in the deck, and there's also two copies of Fire War Axe for that early removal and board control. This version of the deck includes a bunch of Taunt Minions, there's two copies of Stonehill Defender, which defend you in the early game and give you some additional Taunt Minions, and there's two copies of Daihon Hatchling, which also shuffle those Daihon Matrix into your deck so that you get further away from fatigue. There's also Elise the Trailblazer as one of the main win conditions, and that Ungor pack that Elise shuffles into your deck also takes you further away from fatigue. The deck cards in this list are one copy of Iron Big Owl for a silence effect, and there's two copies of weapon removal cards, there's Gluttonous Ooze and there's Harrison Jones. But what you do with these three slots really depends on what you want to achieve in the meta you're facing. I played plenty of builds, I've played with mind control techs, I've played with faceless manipulators. This is just a build that I found to work best in the pre nerf which would meta. It's important to note that the deck has an Azalina Soul Thief in it, and Azalina Soul Thief is a key card. There are many, many matchups where it's completely useless, but there are also some matchups where it's extremely important, such as against Control Warlock. Because if they get that ring down and they can kill their ring and they start progressing with the seals towards the Azari, you have to Azalina. Either when they have seals or when they have Azari in hand, but you have to be able to get an Azari of your own and burn their deck. Because with no dirt rats left to get anything out, it's simply impossible to answer the Azari unless you can have one of your own. And if you have one of your own, then with all the armor that you can gain, that gives you a chance to beat the Warlock with equal hands. As for the mulligans with this deck, you're generally looking for Town Crier, Fire War Axe, Rabbit Worgen and Stonehill Defender. These early solid minions and cards that give you board control and give you ways to survive until later in the game. If you're playing against a deck that you know is going to really flood the board, something like Paladin, then you can also keep Reckless Flurry and Brawl in order to be able to answer those. And if you're playing against Warlock, then you don't need that early game really. You're looking for weapon removal, you're looking for silence, and you're looking for Azalina. Because if it's a control Warlock with Rin, you have to fight Azalina if they get an early Rin. And if you're facing a priest, then you're looking for a big game hunter. Because most priests are Mind Blast priests right now, and the way to lose to Mind Blast priest is to not have an answer to Alex Straza after they have geisted away your shield slams. And Big Game Hunter is that answer. They Alex Traza, you Big Game Hunter, 
you armor up. Ideally, you also have a shield block for that situation, and then you're golden. Control Warrior is in a very interesting position because none of these cards are going to get nerfed next week. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of Control Warrior we need to build for the upcoming meta. But this might be a good starting point, for example. This is so far my favorite build of all the ones that I have tried out. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now let's go take a look at some Control Warrior in action. They just get that. Geist, take away your shield slams, then they Alex you. And then you will die to all the Mind Blast because they have four Mind Blasts then from the Shadow Visions. <laughs> or something like that. Because ideally on Alex turn you play Big Game Hunter Shield block hero power. Which means that you gain 9 armor, so you go to 24. Which is more than they can deal with 4 Mind Blasts, because 4 Mind Blast is 22. So that's like the ideal things that can happen in that particular matchup. And you're basically trying to set up your hand the whole time to get to that position. I think I want to play the Town Crier. Let's find a... let's grab one of these minions. Armoring up is kind of attractive when you have Reckless Flurry, but I might be able to compete a bit on the board even. Oh, it's an old-fashioned build. That's interesting. Is he going to coin call to arms? Hard to say. What I do know is that I'm going to kill these minions now. If I have to use a whirlwind effect, the Vorgan will still survive that. He could also just go in with three. I mean, play two recruits from hand. Hero power another recruit. That would be a pretty decent play. I think I would do that. And then call to arms next turn. That's something I would probably do in this position. Oh, he plays the mountain giants. Nice. Well, I would play the mountain giant if I was playing that. So this is the Stansifka variant. But it has its moments. Like here I am forced to... Probably trade away my minions. Or use my second shield slam too. And that's actually interesting. Because like double shield slam I could kill the giant right here and save the minions to fight for the board even more. But do I need another shield slam for something later? I think it's actually better to do it like this. Let's retain the board. There's some value in having having minions against the paladin. Just having minions is often pretty useful in this matchup. And these turns are pretty weak so far. But we'll see. They might get stronger. I would ideally like to shield block after a flurry. But right now my hand is pretty dry. I might have to look for something. Next turn it's going to get a bit stronger turn again. Probably going for some flood. Oh, just two and a sticker then, right? And I like that play. It was a nice play. Good play. So is this the kind of deck that runs Silver Sword? I'm probably not in too much hurry yet. I still have enough armor to get a Reckless Flurry going. But if he plays like Equality or just Consecration, pushes another 7-9, I'll still be fine with that. I think I don't want to Harrison this true Silver Champion yet. There might be more important weapons to destroy in that deck. Bodyguard seems fine. Yeah, let's grab a bodyguard. This fellow can just hit face. Oh, you always use the true cell champion. You don't want to make all of this stuff susceptible to whirlwind. 
He's playing a pretty patient game here. I think I just well went down one set of minions and play the body bodyguard. Yeah, I suppose the bodyguard is fine instead of armor up. I just hit there. This time I'll play the whirlwind that I top decked. So I don't give him the impression that I have multiple whirlwinds in hand. And then I play the bodyguard. Which on board challenges the stuff that he has there. But of course there's going to be something against that. Is this is this build going to run other weapons than the true silver champion? That's what I wonder. Still saves a lot of resources. I would have exactly good amount of armor now to play Reckless Flurry. So I could just flurry these down. And develop a Harrison Jones. He can rebuild, of course, because he has plenty of resources in hand. But I guess flurry is fine, it gets rid of the juggler. Yeah, let's flurry. And I think I also Harrison. I still have another weapon removal card in the deck, which just arrived. So I have an answer to a sil single silver sword. Should something like that appear. One stegodon has been spent, but there's still another stegodon left. Also running some of these newer, newer things. But this will be a good get on turn. So many other options too. Does he have something that he can use to react to get on? True self champions are gone. Well, that's of course equality. Or can could kill something. I think I'll just play the get on. Let's take this approach. Get rid of the commander. Still one more silver hand recruit from the jailer left in hand. I haven't seen a lot of small minions because he hasn't found call to arms. There comes the equality. It was quite predictable. Then it was just this consecration or is it avenging wrath that's going to come down together with that. Oh, that's interesting card. This will pull the Darius, right? He just spent an equality. I would have a pair of rush minions here. I haven't seen any buffs yet. I think I'm going to rush with both. I think I'm just going to rush with both. We just saw an equality. The odds that he has another equality when he's halfway through his deck is pretty low. There's one card that he has had since the start. So there's some kind of a chance. These two cards are much more recent. That's a silver hand recruit. So what these? If he just plays a silver hand recruit, then well, I can always whirlwind. Mm. Unless he also goes with a stegodon. Now he found a call to arms, and he finds a knife juggler. Oh, this is going to be so many knives. So many knives. There's going to be a lot of knives. Okay, where do they hit? They don't hit well enough, right? I mean, I have the option to brawl, of course. Or I can simply whirlwind. Brawl also deals with even bigger boards because he still has Tarim left in the deck. So let's say I'll whirlwind. Do I leave a 4 2 alive? That's an annoying minion. But Brawl also probably is something alive. I don't want to leave the knife juggler alive. I know that for sure. I guess I'll leave 4 2 rather than a 5 2. Let's do this. I think this is reasonably safe. Three recruits in his hand. 
There's another mountain giant coming at some point. I don't mind the buffs that much, because I can simply silence. Oh, but now I can't silence because I know he has Vela here. Oh dear. Well, that's a problem. I managed to find a problem anyway. Wow. I was in such a good good position. But Brawl would not have solved this anyway, so... It's not like that made a difference. I think I need to ooze the Valanir this turn. Ooze Owl. But then he gets the Valanir back every single turn. That's too powerful. I was briefly considering just taking a Valanir for myself. Then we both have Valanir. But I guess I can't afford to do that. Do I have to brawl this turn? He still has more resources remaining. The odds are 1 in 5 for the Spellbreaker to win. He still has an equal lady left in the deck. And that's 10 damage. So I'm a little bit scared of another equal lady. Because I could play Elise. And armor up. But if he has second equality, then that's going to be bad. I think I still need to go for that line. I think that's still the line I need to take here. I get to 24. But if he plays like equality Avenging Wrath now. But he has only one card that he has had for a long time. Two real new cards. Two Silverhand Recruits. Next turn is probably a better Brawl turn. Okay, please don't find the death rattle. He found the death rattle. Well, that's incredible. And then if he has Tarim to follow up these death rattles, then that's just sweet, I guess. But I still have to brawl this. Because that one card has been in his hand since the beginning. Oh, sorry, what do you think of Acolyte of Pain? I generally don't want the draw. So many cases where I just don't want it. But those death rattles. Do I just leave them be? What if he tarims? Then that's 12, 15 damage. Let's draw with this one first. Okay, I think I'm leaving them. I go with the hatchling. Hatchling hero power. And I kill that big, big, big mean 8-6. But I don't pop any of the death rattles yet. This is the line. This has got to be the line. Because if he plays Tarim, then I can brawl afterwards. Then he gets a bunch of 1-1s, one -ones, but he doesn't have means to buff them anymore. There's only the Blessing of Kings. One copy. He doesn't have Stegodon, so he can't buff the recruits anyway. That was top deck Tarim, by the way. Just a, as a little fun fact. Just as a little fun fact, it was a top deck Tarim. We didn't have it before. But yeah, we just dropped the brawl here. So he doesn't get to Tarim all the one ones afterwards. But they will remain one ones instead. There will be lots of them. So it's still annoying. And there's still a chance that I die if he finds his second equality. So, what can you do? And this is always the Lich King pick, right? So now if he finds equality Avenging Wrath, I guess he's on his way to winning. Unless I can pick up Reckless Flurry very, very quickly. There's one blessing of kings. There's one blessing of kings, there's one consecration. He has an equality. That could also be an equality, that card. Maybe he just had both equalities very early on. 
But Lich King at least gives me a chance to find something useful. So that's going to be 2, 4, 5, plus 5, that's 10 damage. So I'm dead to equality. I'm dead to equality Avenging Wrath. Let's see what I can pick up from the Lich King. That card could be an equality, and if it's an equality, then I guess he wins. Well, it was that card that was the equality. I would have needed any card that kills stuff from the Lich King, I guess. Because now this doesn't look good. Obviously I'm dead to Avenging Wrath, but he would have played the Avenging Wrath already, right? Why would he wait until the end of the turn to do that? So that's 9 damage. He has to run 2 Avenging Wraths in that deck, right? So even if I top deck Reckless Flurry, if he top decks Avenging Wrath, I lose. Okay, with that I need to get the Brawl. Well, that's not a Brawl, but that's still a card. 6 damage. Okay. Well, this is the only play I have. I'm dead to Consecration. Two minions trade, then Consecration, and the rest goes face, and that's exact lethal. So now we're going to find out whether he has a Consecration. So he doesn't have a Consecration. And he also cannot have an Avenging Wrath, because that would also be lethal. Oh, he did have lethal. Optic the lethal. Hmm. Alright, a druid. So probably a spite for druid. Which is always a problem. But we'll see. Start by mulliganing all of this stuff away. Let's try to find some some more useful cards for the matchup. Whirlwind doesn't do a whole lot in this matchup other than together with King Mosh in the late game. It's one of those ways to deal with the Spiteful Summoner. He kept one card, it was not this. And he's almost certainly a Spiteful Druid. Well, no other Druid really wants to die more, right? Well, maybe some kind of token Druid. So if he doesn't do anything this turn... He doesn't do much. No, but this has to be a Town Cryer turn still, right? I mean, that could be a Greedy Sprite. And I guess I want to play the Town Crier, yeah. Let's see if I can find something here. I could have whirlwinded away the Glacial Shard. But I figured maybe there was a way to get more use of the Glacial Shard later. It was a greedy sprite that he kept. Alright. No surprises there. Can I afford to give him the mana? I think the answer is no. I can't afford to give him the mana. Let's let's not give him the mana. I'm not ready for that yet. There are not that many good silence targets in his deck. I just need to be able to amass some armor before turn 6, but right now it looks a bit difficult to do that. Shield Blue can definitely help me with that. I probably have to Whirlwind this turn. So I need to hit here, but I need to play the Whirlwind, gets rid of a couple of minions. Then I could play the War Axe to kill this. Yeah, I think it's fine, that's War Axe to kill that. I could also use the Worgen, I can use Worgen later. And now he can't play Spiteful Summon yet this turn. Much weaker Fungal Mancer. But next turn it could be the Spiteful Summoner. So I have to get ready for that. How do I even get ready for that? I can get to nine I can get nine armor next turn. And shield slam. So if he doesn't roll Tyrant just 
let's assume that's going to be okay. Let's do it like this. Give him just one minion on the board. Well, now I know that he didn't have the Spiteful Summoner in his opening hand, but he can still have top decked it. And now he must not get the Tyrantus. I can deal with anything else but the Tyrantus. Yeah, that's no biggie at all. Big Game Hunter is the one card that can deal with Tyrantus, so... Yeah, I guess I need to save it in case he gets another one. So I'm just going to armor up here. Shield slam that minion. And play a Stonehill Defender on the way. Ooh, go next Sentry and Brawl. That's always a nice combination to have. Let's grab that for future use. Oh, more mushroom power. Interesting. Let's just go and sentry and brawl already then. I could just also reckless flurry. I would have to shield block into reckless flurry. Because I would like to kill the spiteful summoner too. But it's fine. I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. So I'm gonna shield block into reckless flurry. I don't think I need to coin hero power here. That was an option. But I think it should be fine without. Hinting his hand a little. Okay. But both fungal mances are already gone. So this doesn't really achieve much. <laughs> Darius, but Darius can't. Darius cannot get the job done here. Crypt Lord is too powerful. I'm going to brawl this board eventually, but I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. Let me go with the shield block here. Well, that would give me an answer. That's 4 damage coming in. 5 damage potentially. Potentially a bit more if he plays Malfurion. I don't think I want to overreact. Let's chill for a while. Both Fungal Mances are gone anyway. Everything he does looks like he's going to play ultimate infestation next turn. That's really what this looks like to me. I could play both of my rush minions. Playing both rush minions, that's 7 damage. So if I hit there, hit there with the Vorgan and then kill it with Darius. He can still kill Darius with the ultimate infestation. But at least the UI is then going to go that way. Because this has got to be ultimate infestation. There's no other card that he would hold on to this long. Do I want... Can I really afford to take it to my face? I don't think I can. I think I want to kill that fellow there. I might as well call in a hero power. Let's grab some more armor. Now the ultimate infestation has to go to Darius. It really cannot be going towards my face. So that card is not an ultimate infestation. Oh, well that can... Alright. 66% for him to roll on his side of the board. 33% to roll on my side of the board. Let's see. Where does it land? That's the best target. That's the favorite target he had. And that's 9 damage, and I'm not a fan of taking 9 damage right here. It's going to be hard for me to build up my armor as well. So I could Reckless Flurry. I probably need to do that. I 
Reckless throw those ones down and then simply armor up. I couldn't take that much damage to the face right now. I just didn't feel like that. Alright, so now he has a lot of cards. Oh, that Lich King. That means I have to spend the big game hunter now. And if he high rolls the Lich King card, like the previous opponent did, then sky's the limit after that. But yeah, I, I probably need to big game hunter this. And play the stone hill. I can find Dryhorn actually, that's fine. He does run double silence in the deck though, so... He probably has silence available, almost certainly. So Dihorn Hatchling is not going to be that great. Mm, this is so, such a sweet play when you can, whenever you can do this. But that was a mistake, right? Maybe it wasn't. There's always going to be silence. I can't use the Brawl yet. Using the Brawl this early is not good for me. Because he still has so many resources left. He's going to push 9 though with these. So it doesn't mean that I would have to brawl already. I'd hate to brawl this board. When he has that many resources remaining. Now but I can do Whirlwind. That doesn't leave me with a Whirlwind with a King Mosh. For King Mosh though. But it's probably acceptable here. Yeah, let's do Whirlwind. Because when I do Whirlwind, I can trade here, and I can trade there, and then I can play the Hatchling. He's going to silence the Hatchling, of course, but this limits the incoming damage a little bit. And I still have two Brawls left. Kela said eight cards left in the deck. Yeah, there's the silence. I know there was always going to be the silence. There's going to be another silence, though. That's a bummer. That's 11 damage right there. How long can I hold on to the brawls? Maybe next turn is the brawl turn. So I need to trade here, which is not quite what I like. Well, I could trade there. Then that's going to be 13 damage. I will get to keep a minion on the board. That should be okay. I'll trade there. And play the hatchling. I'll take something like 13, 14 maybe. I'm still alive after that. He doesn't silence. Well, that's a piece of good news for me. But he even goes for full. Oh! Now I know he has ultimate infestation in hand as well. Well, this was fine, I guess. So it's a brawl turn. Cornered sentry into brawl. If something big wins, then I need to shield slam. That's the cornered sentry into brawl turn. Need to get rid of that cobalt scale bane. Need to and need to. Sometimes you just cannot. Feels bad, man. I really wanted to kill that Cobalt Scalebane. Do I want to kill it so badly that I'm going to shield slam it now? Well, there's no more... There's no more big minions coming, so yeah. It just keeps buffing all the other stuff. And then the other stuff is dangerous and if any of those small stuff then wins the brawl. Oh, he lost Malfurion. That's nice. He did get some pretty sweet stuff here, but... Oh, and he's... He really wants to extend into the next brawl. Really? Okay. Well, I take it. Let's brawl that board. I mean, he needs to fledgling the wind now, right? I can see. Of 
of the good builds. I mean, even Paladin currently. It's the Valanir build. This this is the popular one, like you can see, three streams. And matchups for this deck. Odd Warrior, it's 60%. So even Paladin traditionally was unfavored against Odd Warrior. But the mo most recent developments in that build, which came after those top legend ranks were achieved with this deck, and after Control Warriors were being played to legend, now have completely reversed the matchup. So instead of 40 60, it's now 60 40 for the Paladin. So, you, and I mean, almost half of the decks I face are even Paladin. So that's not a great place to be. And I think I've played extremely well against the even Paladin decks, but I still have fallen just a tiny bit short. We admire commitment to playing tier 2 and 3 decks. Yes, my commitment to playing tier 2 and 3 decks is significant. He's going to play Call to Arms next turn, right? He kept two cards. He can push three damage with these. I need to armor up because I can't play the Worgen. I need to armor up so that I can... He pushes this damage and I can still flurry away his Call to Arms. This is what it needs to be done. Hi, Trek. Then again, he managed to pick up the knife juggler first, so I was I got down to two armor. Well, that's inconvenient. That is very very inconvenient. He needed a knife juggler on the first pull. So what was the probability that he gets knife juggler on the very first card? Now that was very very low, but it really worked out for him here. If he has a buff for this board next turn, then I guess that's a win for him. I could reckless try so that he only has a 5-1 on the board, but it seems kind of a waste to... So it's simply armor up. I take the punishment and I hope he cannot buff anything. Blessing of Kings. Blessing of Kings is the only card here that punishes me right now. Nothing else does that. So I'm fine with anything else but Blessing of Kings. He didn't even take advantage of the jugglers. That's curious. I mean, I'm not concerned about these few points of damage here. The armor is gone anyway with the Reckless Flurry. Just needed to get rid of the jugglers. But he still has a ton of resources. We'll see how he chooses to use them. Quite ineffectively, I would say. That's interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. So I have a few options. I can do Town Crier, Vogue, and Hero Power. Or I can do Vogue and Stonehill Defender. I think I like the Hero Power play. And I like drawing a Rush Minion. Now I already told him this is a Rush Minion, so I'm going to use it. Let me hero power. Trek with Baku, but no quest. Yeah, quest Baku is performing very poorly on the ladder. The statistics just show that it's not a good deck. This is a much better deck. But this is a very heavily unfavored matchup nowadays, so that's a downside. I take that trade. I guess I play the Stonehill and armor up. I could also play the Elise and armor up. Stonehill kind of feels safer. It's mana inefficient though. I haven't seen any Avenging Brats or anything yet. That one too. Would you say Valenir score now? Well, it's now in the, it's in the most popular list right now. Yeah, that list has really exploded over the past days, and it seems to be a very good list. I can do Elias and Hero Power. This is mana efficient. Elias, 
challenges the Valenir nicely. He might of course use an equality. I guess it's unlikely. If he gets the Valenir buff to land on a Saronite chain gang, that's a big win for him. But it's very unlikely. And now I can always silence the Lord Horde so I get rid of the Valenir for good. I also get rid of that card draw. So that's a double win for me. He can still have plenty of resources out there. Stuff like Tarim. But I'm always silencing the Loot Horde. Do I trade it away is another question. I think I'd rather go with the Stone Hill Defender now. Oh, Rotten Apple Bomb is nice. He of course has those silences, but... And Elise will trade away the Recruit, because he still has a Stegodon left. Person, that list doesn't include Giants. Yeah, there are no Giants in that list. Alanir is the top of the curve in the most popular version of this deck. I think he's playing pretty poorly, but who knows. Maybe it's fine to just hit face with everything you have all the time. So now we've seen all the weapons, two True Cell Champions and Valanir, which means that Glutonosus is fine here. So we go with the Glutonosus. And well, I have to trade away the 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five is a pretty annoying minion. Do I want to trade away the 2-1 as well? A couple of ways I can go about with that. I think I'll go with the Rapid Worgen. And this one trades there. Of course this is a bit vulnerable to Consecration. Or to Avenging Wrath. But I think I'm willing to take those chances. Valanir gone, Champions gone. There's one more Stegodon left. This is not the best list by the way, because the best list doesn't run any Jailers anymore. And or Stegodons. So this is some kind of slightly earlier iteration. I mean I could flurry this board. He gets another handful of recruits. But I still retain a brawl. So I guess it's okay. I don't have to play the Ungoro pack this turn. Yeah, I suppose I want to fly because he can have Tarim. Yeah, I can give you a link. I can give you a link soon. I could alternatively also just brawl. Because then I can get a lot of armor for Reckless Fury later. I'm gonna just brawl this. I want to play the Apple Bomb. I couldn't. I hate it that the brawl animation takes. Yeah, I shouldn't have. That is my bad. What can you do? Now I might lose because of that. Man, that hurts really bad because this was just the one time when I was actually winning. How many cards do I have in hand? I have seven cards in hand. So I play this, I have six cards in hand. I play the Ungor pack. This is fine. I start with the Whirlwind. Then I play the Ungoro pack. If I don't get anything other interesting cards, I play the Apple Bone. And I armor up. Let's do this. He got a huge advantage from that. Why would you trade? No, you're not trading. Of course, you're just avenging Wrath here. But I got that 4 healing, so it's not all bad. So he probably has a Tarim there. What do I need to do? He already spent an equality. Does he have another equality in hand? I could gain 6 armor from Borax and Earthen Scales. I could go to 7. He has six on board. I'm not dead to another Avenging Wrath. So 
So I think I need to do this. I play the Vorax. And I earth and scales the Vorax. And then I play the Nesting Rock. Because Nesting Rock gets taunt now that there are two minions on the board. He had double equality in hand. But there's no more knife jugglers. I don't mind this. He didn't have a second Avenging Wrath or a second Consecration. That's so good. And equalities are gone now. So I could hit there and Reckless Flurry to deal with this board. And then I can start filling my own board. Yeah, we hit there. Reckless Flurry that board down. Go in with the Diehorn Hatchling. Alright, both equalities are gone. So there's no real way for him to get through if I get a taunt wall up. Why do they run Argent Commander in this list? It's Reach. It's good with the Valanir. Alright, now we're well on our way to recovery. Pen Creeper looks like a fun card. Just trade away the tokens. Not not let him build a big board for Tarim. Both Call to Arms is gone. Both Avenging Rats are gone. Valanir is gone. Equalities are gone. He doesn't have anything left. Yes. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.